with Elden Ring, FromSoft went in a bold new direction and made something they've never made before, a tough-as-nails medieval fantasy RPG with an interlocking map full of esoteric storytelling and a cynical sense of humor. Wait, that's just Demon's Holes. This is Demon's Holes. Sheen, this is the seventh week in a row you've shown Demon's Holes. Class. Miss Foul. This one is different. You know what's worse than a rehash, though? By being a Japanese developer, rehashing the same tropes through successive games that are technically in a different world, FromSoft is just rehashing Squaresoft's Final Fantasy formula. Both series are super successful, so dang, why don't I rehash the idea and make another Final Fantasy VII build? On my quest to find the most fun build in Elden Ring, I endured the strife as Cloud Fantasy, the main character of Final Fantasy V. If you want to watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. I was off streaming for a while, but I'm back, baby. Join the Patreon to give me money, and to start the video, just keep watching. I promise, I'm about to start busting. Let me tell you something. Busting makes me feel good. We'll kick things off as a confessor purely for the drip. It's very Advent children. Hey, that's kind of Christmassy, Advent and whatnot. Until Miyazaki puts a virgin killer sweater in the game, this is the best we can do. Cowabunga, Limgrave, Crafting Kit, Aerith gives us a motorcycle, and more importantly, we grab the Wet Blade. That'll let us put Materia in our weapon, although we could have just asked Sid to do it. Not all that important, I guess. Just faster. Strength tier is important because we are getting a big sword. On the way there, we save Barret from a hole and get some blades beams from the Sacred Blade Ash of War near the Third Church of America. Into Kaelid, we sneak onto a busted down caravan and grab a buster sword. It's so heavy, I'm assuming it broke the whole cart. Nearby, I grab some fire material with the Flame of the Red Maids. We're basically grabbing Ashes of War to put into the sword to use for our spells. One, because that's how it works in Final Fantasy VII, and two, because Ashes of War are just better spells. Flame of the Red Maids is the best fire spell in this game. And we'll get more fake spells that are better than real spells spells later. Deeper into Kaelid, we get some grave robbing done. Pop into Fort Faroth, grab the Dectus Medallion half, and Radigan's Sword Seal before warping out so we don't take a death. Unfortunately, the meaty size of our sword means we have to use a talisman I dislike, since it boosts all of our physical stats by 5, but gives us a 15% damage penalty. I want to level up the Buster Sword right away, since not only does it help the sword's damage, but it also helps the damage of our Ashes of War. That means we skip over Stormvale, grab a few smithing stones on the way through Lernia, and make our way down the Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. Notable thing here, while we get ambushed by the miners on the elevator, I use guard counters. The greatsword has an 84% physical block, so it works like a decent shield. Don't really need that against the Crystallion. Big weapons break stance easily, stance breaking makes the fight go way faster. It took less than a minute. I had to keep the summary extra short to make sure it wasn't longer than the fight. That'll give us the smithing stone bell bearing to buy some smithing stones, one and two. Next bell bearing is in Altus, but I forgot to get the second piece of the Dectus Medallion. Imagine, Cloud in Fort Height, battling the Fort Knight and getting a victory roll royale for the other half of the Dectus Medallion. We boogie up to Altus, ignore the tree sentinels, and squish a vulgar militia member on the way to the Bell Baron 2. While here, we might as well grab a few extra golden seeds and the Lightning Slash Ash of Warp. It's right next to these Ballistae. Oh! Oh, let's kill everyone who runs the Ballistae, and then boom, Thundaga acquired. We'll use the Blade Beams against Gilka, since I'm probably going to fight her eventually anyway, and we need the runes. She killed us since we haven't leveled up at all and are taking extra damage, but we still beat her the second time. Sacred Blade shoots a beam forward, then adds extra holy damage to our weapon. Holy damage is bad, though. We're not using this one a lot. Tibia Mariners are weak to holy, and there's one in Altus that drops a mid-game amount of runes. It's the Tibia Mariner. How hard could it be? Unless he summons Sans, the funny skeleton, and that one-shots me, then I'd have a bad time. Okay, let's do the Putrid Avatar instead. It takes double damage from fire, so after a few flames of the red mains, it just burns down. We really just need runes to level up the sword at this point, so I'll take on some other easy bosses. Didn't know you could summon Zack Fair for the demi-human sheaves, but I guess that's helpful. It's a really easy boss. There's enough little dudes that you can get ganked if you don't have another soldier with you. We can team up with another soldier to fight Nerd Juice, but Sephiroth is late to the party. We died twice. He straight up jumped over my Fyraga. Is that a loud? Eventually, we team up with the edgy swordsman and get the win. He's so cool. Hopefully he never goes bonkers and tries to burn down the world and murder us with an excessively long sword. Patches is way easier than Nerd Juice. He doesn't have status effects and just tries to use a shield against our sword. Silly Patches, you can't block the Buster Sword. The whole point is the Bustin'. We were just shy of leveling up the sword again, so I took out the Limgrave Tibia Mariner. That was very, very fast. Then we scoot through the poop of the abandoned cave, but I forgot to put Fyraga on instead of the Blade Beams. The Clean Rot Knight resists holy and 
and they're weak to fire. So they get the first win and we come back. Total death seven. We're dying a lot early. It's not a great sign for the rest of the run. Faraga does straight up roast them though. It's less than 30 seconds. Without the early dragon levels, we're just kind of a glass cannon. So we're gonna die sometimes. Let's point that cannon at Margit with some help from Wedge. He's helpful at the beginning of the game, but doesn't stick around long. For now, his swords deal a lot of stance damage. Our Faraga does a lot of stance damage and we just kind of get to bully an old man to death. Doesn't feel great, but it does feel good. Cloud had fun in Fort Height, but now it's time to be Fort Gale. This will be our first time coming through here for the channel, so here's the short version. Avoid the Gravity Archer, climb the ladder, what a thrill, and jump into the cage match with the Lion Guardian. You can one-shot us because we don't have any vigor. It's also fast enough to avoid our Firaga spam, so let's go get some vigor and try again. The Beautiful Avatar in Grail hits harder than the one in Caelid. Not a problem if you get the rhythm of two Firaga and a crit down. I didn't the first time, but did the second time. Rhythm minigames are my kryptonite. I dumped all those runes into vigor, and now we can take multiple hits from the Lion Guardian. That was enough, and we are rewarded for our bravery with the Lion's Claw Ash of War, which will make us braver. Courage comes from meat. Let's get meatier. Meteor. 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 For a meteor sword, we take this big old butcher's knife and carve up Grail. Before carving this turkey, we do cook it with some Firagas to the face, breaking its stance really fast so we can smash it. I thought it resisted fire, but no, even if it did, Firaga's stance breaking power is good enough that it would still be useful. With a heavier sword, we head to Storm Vale and storm that veil. Didn't even kill Gostok this time, Cloud was feeling merciful. We meet up with Tifa, she's interested in politics and wants to become an Italian senator. If you haven't played the game, it's one of the most moving stories in video game history. Google Tifa Italian Senate on your work computer to find out more. Cloud and Tifa start pounding. Godric, together. I'm using the Braver Ash of War, it's a front flip that basically works like a fully charged strong attack without as much wind up. That puts him in phase two pretty quickly, Tifa gets grabbed, which is more of a time waste than anything since he's invincible while he's grabbing someone. Shortly after, we get the kill. If we're gonna get Tifa elected, we need to work on her campaign. She gives us the Arsenal Charm, which boosts our maximum equip load. Then we meet up in the village of the Alvern Erics to take on the Capra Demon from Demon Souls. The game crashed the first time, that doesn't count as a loss though, and coming back, we just slam and jam it. We've killed endgame dragons at this point. This dude is just an overworld enemy they gave a boss health bar for some reason. Despite our endgame damage, our potions are still not very high. So let's do a quick detour to the Weeping Peninsula. I kill the Knight's Cavalry on the way, just helps the ranking to kill an extra boss. Three Sacred Tears, easy peasy. Other important errand heading through the safe path of Stormvale, we don't get locked in because Godric is already dead. Kill the Grafted Scion for no reason because it doesn't drop anything, then open up a fog door for the Iron Wet Blade. That allows us to make our sword heavy no matter what Ash of War we put on it, so it only will scale with our strength. Lightning Slash adds extra lightning to the sword, check that out against Loretta since she's weakest to lightning. Maybe it's because her big glaive is like a lightning rod. Maybe all ghosts are weak to lightning. I don't really know what the reason is, I just use Thundaga Materia and clean up. Outside I can slam a booty beetle for the chilling mist ash of war, which will be our blizzard materia, and say hi to Jessie. She really wants to marry us, kind of thirsty. To complete the quest to lead her on, we need to go underground. And to go underground, we have to beat up Starscourge Radon. We get to fight him with Aerith, Barret, and Cloud's fursona, Blythe. Chilling Mist is great here, since it applies Frostbite, lowering his damage resistance, so the party hits him harder. It also does a big chunk of damage right away, not bad at all. He starts Phase 2 by jumping up and turning into a Meteor. Nothing Cloud hasn't dealt with before, we kill him in Phase 2 before he can even bring out the Meteors. Having party members is such a big help. Let's go get a permanent one that's technically optional, but not if you're playing the game right. Ninja, ninja, rap. Jesse quest time, let's have Cloud enter Radon's big hole, then grab the glove bell bearing one, fight the mimic here. It's very easy with guard counters and chilling mist. Not even just easy, it's always easy. This time it's also fast. We grab the finger slayer blade, head through the Einzel River main, say hi to Phalanx from Demon's Holes, grab some glove warts, and then come back dressed as Marvel's Hercules to spice things up. We recorded this on Halloween. I try to get these things recorded as early as possible. We're going all the way up to the Moonlight Altar this time, which means crossing the Lake of Rot. It's like a souped up version of the abandoned cave, and this soup is made of pure shit. To go deeper, we need the wedding ring for Jessie, even if we're not planning on giving it to her. So let's slam Smarag, then go to Raya Lucaria, slam Red 13, feels bad man, slam Moongrum, and get to Renala. We easily one cycle phase one, our damage is off the charts at this point, then finish phase two fast enough with some jump attacks. Everything's going great. Time for that to end as we head back to the Lake of Rot and get murdered by Spider-Man. Spider-Man doesn't kill people. 
Then we get to fight Astel. It's like a spindlier, more bloodboardy version of the Elden Beast. It spams lasers, it flies away, it's a huge pain in the ass to deal with. It ends up killing us three times, but eventually we're able to just get aggressive enough that we break its stance and can kill it with a big, meaty, critical hit. Turns out, you can't go to the Moonlight Altar without destroying your fursona, so we have to get the Jesse Real doll, then fight the Baleful Shadow. It has boss posture, or boster as I like to call it. While it's glowing red like most NPC fights, it's not an NPC. That means flame of the red mains will let us fully burn it down with no issue. Electo is much scarier on the Moonlight Altar. We're using Chilling Mist here since her Frostbite resistance is pretty low. I wonder if it's to encourage you to do this with the Dark Moon Greatsword, which is nearby? Who knows? When I can, I use the guard counters. It's pretty effective. The last time we tried to do this was on the Rando run where we didn't have enough vigor to live through the grab attack. This time, we do. We whiff the crit for some reason and then we're able to finish her off. With that, we have the Great Ninja Yuffie and enough runes to max her out right away. Black Knight Teach is the best spirit ash in the game. Let's show off why. Yeah, we haven't headed into Lindell yet. Let's bully the hell out of the Draconic Tree Sentinel. We've got big slams, and Yuffie has the big blade beams, which lower the Tree Sentinel's total health and apply some serious damage over time. Like, an absurd amount of damage over time. Why is she still this strong? They're not telling FromSoft to nerf her, but, like, they should probably nerf her. We kill this dude in a bit over a minute. Into Midgar, we can blow up the Erd Tree Avatar in 20 seconds, then make our way to the Ritual Shield Talisman, which will boost our defenses at full health. You know, so we don't die instead stuff. Godfrey Shade time, Yuffie blade beams it immediately. She really is the best. Not only does she have the best move in the game, she uses it. We get a stance break with the Flame of the Red Mains, then kill the ghost in less than a minute. For Morgoth, we can summon Aerith too. It's a whole Final Fantasy party of three. Tish blade beams right away, and we're lightning slashing because apparently that's what Morgoth is weakest to. Honestly, Flame of the Red Mains is probably still better, but I want to mix it up. Would it be fun to just use Flame of the Red Mains for every run? Yeah, but I guess I'll mix it up anyway. Morgoth dies in a little over a minute, so we can head to the mountaintops of the giants via the Forbidden Lands. Wow, Sephiroth is now talking about burning down the whole world? What a bad guy, time for an epic fight. Epic fight over, Sephiroth is a wuss. Ignore Alice, grab the ancient dragon smithing stone and prepare for the fire giant. We'll use chilling mist here to apply frostbite to his toes. Have you ever stepped on an ice cube? Yeah, no wonder this does so much damage. Not as much as Yuffie's blade beams though, you know you're hitting hard when you're in a party with Cloud Strife and he's the backup DPS. Phase 2 begins and Jeepers, Frostbite, and Blade Beams just melt this dude. He has so much HP, but I'm pretty sure the Blade Beams work on a percentage of HP. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. Fire Giant dead. Before we move on in the world, I think it's important that we make sure Tifa gets elected. I don't know if you've been paying attention to Italian politics, but they could use someone committed to fighting climate change instead of being a fascist. We need to pick up Tifa's bird, so let's blue Skidoo back to the Chapel of Anticipation, squish the Grafted Scion, it's too fast to talk about, then we can give the bird to Nefeli, talk to Mr. Fort Height, go back to Fort Height, and bada bing, bada boom, Tifa is now a proud Italian senator. Aerith dies for the plot. Sorry if I don't spend a lot of time on that, it's just kind of expected at this point. Let's party. It's a party for Amazulu time, the whole world is falling apart, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna fight a dragon I don't have to. Nope, just run right past it and summon Wedge for the Godskin duo. They're also weakest to lightning, so, uh, okay, Thundaga again. Tish Blade beams them early and somehow we survive that rollout. Then we get a crit on Chunky and start bullying with three-part harmony. It's fine to bully the Godskin duo. They're bullies. They deserve it. They drop the last smithing stone bell bearing so we can max out the Buster Sword. To max out the Ashes of War, though, we need to head up to Mount Gelmnir and say hi to Barret in the hot tub. After killing the Magmorn so they don't get in the way of our conversation. Then we hit the swag jump and meet up with him in Faramazula to fight to the death. We win pretty easily. Sorry, Barrett. Love you, buddy. Thanks for the shard of Alexander. That boosts the damage of our weapon arts by 15%. It was nice and fun, but the bird run isn't. We made it out unscathed, but we wouldn't stay unscathed. Unfortunately, we ran out of magic while fighting the Draconic 3 Sentinel and took an L. Second time, it was easy. Just use Flame of the Red Mains, then bonk, then repeat. Malaketh is next on the horizon and he is never free. Sure, we can stun him really fast with Flame of the Red Mains. Yuffie can melt him, and then we can break his stance midair for a win in less than a minute. But what if we died, though? Gideon Offnir is also definitely not free. Welcome to IHOP! <laughs> oh, well, I guess he's a, a little free, then. 
Hey, Godfrey time. We can summon everyone's favorite Italian senator, and that might have been a mistake. Since summoning another ally increases the amount of stance pressure you need to break an enemy stance, it might make Godfrey harder. <laughs> Just kidding. It's the difference between stunning him with three or four red mains. And we have a tanky senator for an extra distraction. This took a little over a minute. I was so confident, I didn't even get a great room. We're just gonna raw dog Radagon. He heavily resists holy damage, which is what Tisha's blade beam does, but uh, well, he doesn't resist it that much. We break the stance and get a big old crit. He has no fire resistance, so Flame of the Red Mains is pretty great against him. Hammer Slammer comes out, but we get through it. Elden Beast time, here we go. We get a super early stance break. Yuffie blade beams to carve through that massive Elden Beast health bar, and we avoid the flame breath. Then Elden Stars and Elden Rain at the same time, and uh, oh no, oh no, we ran out of mana. That means no more Fyraga spam. We just have to actually hit it? Like, with a weapon? Gross! It pulls out the Elden Flurry, and Tish almost blade beams it to death, but then it sends out the undodgeable Elden Rain. It's gonna be close, but we squeaked it out at 4 hours and 56 minutes, with 32 bosses slain and 15 deaths, making it our third best run so far. It's the best average boss time, averaging a boss every 9 minutes and 15 seconds. The early deaths are what stopped it from being number one. It easily could have been if we just put bleed on the weapon, cheesed the early dragon, and grabbed 40 vigor at the beginning. I just didn't want to do that since Cloud only ever uses the Buster Sword, and you can't put Bloody Slash on Colossal Swords. You can put it on Great Swords, but the Great Sword is a Colossal Sword, not a Great Sword, for some reason. Mixing up Ashes of War is great, and the Great Sword hits like a unique weapon despite its flexibility. It might be my favorite weapon in the game. If you want to watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We find new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon to support the channel, and follow my other channel if you like Dungeons and Dragons. I've built a lot of characters over there too.